Hey, 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 y'all, hey, y'all, hey, y'all, and welcome back to another episode of Voices from Behind the Walls of TDCJ. Um, my guest that's going to be coming on today, his name is LaKendrick L. Northern, and he's going to have an opportunity to share his story. I want you guys to make sure that you are sharing this out um, in your circle of influence. If you are not following us over on um, the Free Texas Campaign on Facebook, Please go over, follow us on Facebook. We're also on YouTube. And if you want to um, catch some of our previous shows, um, you can go over to iHeart, um, the Free Texas Campaign on YouTube. Um, we have a LinkedIn page, but I haven't quite set it up yet. Y'all, I'm doing all this by myself. So um, hang hang in there with me. Um, if you have some expertise, um, with advocating um and nonprofit um organizations um and and have a passion for working with those that are incarcerated um wrongfully or overly incarcerated i would love to have you a part of the free texas campaign um i am the co-founder and um i am doing all that i can to help bring um awareness to these um cases um, I, I'm working on about 30 different um, cases trying to share these um, individual story. Um, we are calling and, and asking the state of Texas, those citizens of the state of Texas to stand up and be a voice because this could be you. This could be one of your family members because it is quite apparent for the last three to four decades, the state of Texas have been riddled with corruption. You can Google corruption in the state of Texas and so much come up, y'all. So much come up. It, it, it's just the heart, disheartening, you know, and a lot of people don't even realize what is actually going on and taking place in the state of Texas. If I had not been approached by um, someone that was incarcerated, y'all, I would not know that all these things are, are taking place. So I have to, when I, when I know that um, something is going on, the I have to speak up. To accept this free call, press one have to, speak to refuse. Up. Thank have you for using up. Securus. You may start the conversation So now. again, y'all, please yeah. share this in your circle of influence. Um, if you would, share this out. Hi, how are you? I'm great. I'm great. I was just um doing my little um intros and my little um stuff. So um if you would um tell everybody who you are. Oh, my name is uh Lakendrick Northern. Lakendrick the Shake Northern. Uh, I'm down here in uh Texas T D C and uh I'm here for Timber Capital Murder and Game of Life Sentence. I've been down here since uh, nineteen ninety eight. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm not even from Texas. Wow. Um, if you feel up to it or would like to give a overview of your case, your the circumstances that led to your incarceration. Well, uh, what you mean? Uh, the, the circumstances got me locked up. Whatever. Yes. Okay. Well, it's part of. I, I had a daughter. I had a girlfriend, we were living together first, you know, and we, you know, it was kind of hard out there in the world, so we were behind on the rent. But anyway, we was paying the rent and stuff like that, and we had got evicted, and so we had got paid to get in advance, and they tried to say we didn't. So I had got with them and asked them, you know, what was going on, what was going on with that, and they they got all this stuff and all that. So we had went to work one day, and we come back, and there was a dream, lean on the door a lot, but the whole time we didn't ask them for the, uh, a part of it to be fixed, so the slide door was open. So that's when I find out they took all my stuff, you know, the, the furniture and all this stuff. So they left a number, we called a number, and they was getting out right on the phone. My living girlfriend, she got right there. I find out they had took my, my daughter's bed, she went number four and a half months. And that's when I was like, wow, this, 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 this can't be right. So when she got on the phone with them, and they was, you know, getting out that rape with her and stuff like that. So we ended up going over to the, the uh, apartment. But uh, the tenant, uh, which you call it the managers, which they that you can talk to the people about. So went over there, and they had they were like, uh, went answer the door, and then we went back to the apartment, and then her husband come and say, hey man, you can stay in here for the night or whatever, you know what I'm saying, just like, and you talk to the So we went in the morning, and everything went down. We went in there, and then they just got irate, and it was uh, um, and, and the lady that got irate, they was going back and forth, going back and forth. You know what I'm saying? A lot of arguing in my, my, my mind, you know what I'm saying? I can see all of that. that, 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 that shooting period. But this 
Wow. So, wow. How do you believe that um, the Texas judicial system have failed you? Well, first of all, it's, it's the proper challenge and procedures they folks went through, and they didn't went through. But see, uh, being lateness to the law, we don't know anything about the law. Uh, coming in as young, young teenager, individuals, you know, at the time, like I said, I was 18 years old. I didn't know nothing about the law, so pretty much how to get us. We don't know anything, and then we come down there and we get misled. Where if from the from the beginning, they asked me my statement. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I told my animals they don't remember nothing, so I had to be appointed the lawyer. Well, according to Texas law, you have 48 hours to get a lawyer appointed to you. Well, according to my paperwork, uh, you you have a doctor sheet with the court, and you know. So I locked up April 3rd, 1998, and I was indicted April 6th. And they I was first indicted with two attempted murders. You know what I'm saying? Which carried two to 20, and then June 11th they came. And re indicting with a five count indictment, you know what I'm saying, with a tenth of capital murder, two attempted murders, murder, two aggravated assault, and left up for the jury to decide. So the top paragraph, it, uh, it contains five to 99, the other two to 20. So I believe they were being vindictive for me because at the same time, I had no no way of contesting those first two indictments because if you get a, a new indictment, it's supposed to be dismissed according to the Texas law. Where there's no dismissal. And I find out through public records, they don't have a line to my mother when she met for me that the dismissal was after my trial date it was April 28th, 1999, when I was found guilty. And they, and, and they come back and I see the paperwork and said dismissed. And it's not it's not recorded on my docket sheet. And my first two indictments for attempted murder, it wasn't recorded on my docket sheet. And this whole time I was fighting and couldn't even contest the dismissals or the change of indictment, I still had no attorney. So from April 3rd to June 15th, I had no attorney on this in, in, in the county. Well, after that, they assigned a lawyer to me, and he came, and he was like, you know, what happened? I would say, hey, man, I don't remember. I picked out, and I really, you know, I don't, I don't remember the case, you know what I'm saying? So, so he, he get a step with me, and that's the last time I've seen him. And he, he was my court appointed lawyer, he was my PR lawyer, and he was my PDR lawyer. So how can you find him to just count on yourself, you know what I'm saying, for the mishaps? But it's more, it, it's way more to him, though. But, but that, that's, that's far as, like, the far beginning of the you dealing with the magistrate, you know, I had no lawyer there to be there for the uh, magistrate hearing. Or you, they find you know, with the uh, when you get arraigned and all that. I had no attorney then. I I never had talked to a magistrate, so I basically was left defending for myself. You know, just you know, just me left in the county. You know what I'm saying? So that's that. That's in the beginning too. Wow. So you, <laughs> wow, that's a lot. I um <laughs> wow. It's a lot of gonna miss because you know, like I say, I've been, I've been trying to. It's been years I've been messing my case, but it's, it's so much dealing with it, so many ins and outs that it, it's kind of. It, it's a time if I, if I was to sit down and had everything in order, but you know I'm really coming off the head right now. But you know later on I maybe get everything uh, squared away. But it, it's it's a, it's a lot to it, though, you know. So and dealing with the main issue I was fighting with us. Is uh, in a disproportionate sense, you know. I I don't know. You know what I blacked out. The, the main thing I say I'm illegally sentenced disproportionately. You know what I'm saying? On attempted capital murder. When in fact I should have been sentenced on the second degree of attempted murder. They only carry two to twenty. You know what I'm saying? Especially coming from two original indictments that were dismissed, and then I got reindicted. So I'm like, you know. I was indicted first thing they had they had the charge right the first time. Because if you if you look at the Texas statute, I'm under nineteen oh three A seven A. And this this according to the law, I'm I'm gonna read what the law says. Under court, they said it's under court, it was in the other um uh statutes too, uh, cases. But this is under court section nineteen oh three A seven A and B under been drafted, presented and entered into the Texas Penal Code together as a means to seek the death penalty against mass murderers. As originally drafted as of November 12, 1984, Texas House Bill 8 did not differentiate between the two subsections and simply made it capital offense to murder more than one person, regardless of whether the killings occurred in the same criminal episode. The sponsors of the bill made it clear in the public hearing of the House Committee on the Criminal Jurisprudence that, as revised, subsection 8 was meant to enable the state to seek the death penalty against 
against mass murderers, such as terrorist attacks or the killing of a number of people at once, while subsection B was meant to be for same for serial killers. Okay, with that said, my whole point is this. It was two, in my case, it was two people shot. No one, no one is deceased, no one is dead. So that's, that's why when I first came in, that's why I said I had two attempted murders, which carried two and 20. Right. So they come back and, and charge me with 10 to count the murder. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how is you charge me 10 to count where there's nobody. Okay, according to your statute, the reason that your statute, you first it says, according to the Texas legislative law, in order to even reach and get to a 1903, you have to invoke capital murder. Capital murder has to be invoked by 1902B1. And that's a murder. It has to be invoked first. So, under mine, you, you have you have to have in section seven it says murders more than one person. Okay. And then in section eight, capital A, it says during the same criminal transaction. Okay. Those are after the murder. You got to meet that after the murder. That's why you got the conjunction and. You know. So, and then I had I even went on to say you got a ladder to they to they charges. You got capital murder. Let's include that as tempted capital murder. And let's include that as murder. And let's include that as tempted murder. And let's include that as aggravated assault. So what I'm trying to argue is, if you have attempted murder and murder after that, how did you jump from attempted murder to attempted capital murder and I'm going to jump the murder statute? Because in my eyes, the way the statute is, is, is made, first of all, it's for terrorists and all that. You know, and really, people don't understand, of course, the Texas law, the Texas capital punishment statute is the sentencing regime. And I'm going to read what it says about the sentences in toward that and then I get on to, to what I'm trying to prove. It said the term capital murder is the term that describes the sentencing regime rather than a criminal offense. There is no crime in capital murder that is different from murder. Capital murder is murder. But it's a murder that is accompanied by an aggravating factor that provides the state with a greater range of punishment than that which applies to the offense. And that's under Woods. 568 Southwest 3D 162 2018. Okay, in that Woods case, she had ordered and overturned it. And she had she had an offense where she tried to kill her baby or whatever, but the baby lived and they didn't prove the act of the offense because they couldn't say the baby's name. So the, the the jury, they thinking that it's a regular adult. So they can charge her with that. So she come back and said, Hey, this is this, this is a baby. This this never was uh, mentioned that this person, uh, it didn't show who I killed or tried to kill or anything like that. So it's like, wow. Okay, they come back and say, okay, we we had it right the first time, but she's saying no. I'm arguing this out. This portion sense me because of uh, y'all didn't meet all the aggravated offense. Y'all didn't have the uh, aggravated factor, and which is telling the, the age of the person. You know, if they would have knew that, then it would have been a different situation. And my case is. I'm saying I'm just pushing because there's you got to invoke the 1902 B1 was the murder first, if anything, you know. And then in to prove to prove my point that you have to have an aggravating factor underlying aggravating factor to do this. Even a judge, a concurrent judge like Kiesler in St. Albin 537 Southwest 3D 39 Texas Criminal Appeals 2017, he held that in a single trial. And and, and before I go on. Uh, this guy had shot these people. He shot uh, like four. Let me see, one, two, three. He shot four people and killed one. Now, under this, under this Texas penal code, that they got me charged with uh, with a life sentence. Under that is what they got me charged with. So, I had this right here. It does apply to me because these people shot all these people all these times right here, and at the same time, he had a body. So it says, in a single trial, St. Albin was tried and convicted for a murder of Oscar Nava that attempted capital murders of Christian Gonzalez, Michael Lopez, Juan Garcia, and Luis Martinez, and assault on a public servant. The underlying aggravating factor for each attempted capital murders was Oscar Nava's murder in St. Albin's 537 3 to 39. So I, I have more. With this, it, 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 it doesn't make sense how they did it. You know, because they wouldn't allow, I had expert witness, they wouldn't allow him to testify with a show to jury that, hey, hey, this guy, okay, he, he backed out, he out, out, uh, diagnosed with this over disorder. He, he ran a Rocha ink block test on me, a Spiegel eye roll test on me, and I did a uh, much of a choice. And he proved that, hey, man, I, I can speak in your behalf. Well, they tried to say it was hearsay, but 
how did the hearsay when I didn't say, I, I, I didn't have no statement. All I was doing was doing what he asked me upon his graduation. I told him nothing about my case because I can't tell him nothing because I don't remember anything. So they tried to say this and they, they denied his testimony. Therefore, if the jury would have had, had heard his testimony, then, you know, it would have been different because you have to have the intent to do things. And then, like, on another case, you had this guy, he argued, he argued that with attempted capital murder, there's no such thing, but he had tried to order that uh, the 1501 to act uh, attempted. Well, they come back and say, hey, we can attempt, attempt anything. But I'm not arguing that, you know. So I, I say I think it's totally clear that I'm not arguing a 1501 attempt, nor the attempt. But I do argue the fact that it's Blake made an ex parte St. Albans case, 537 Highway 2939, 2017, a recent case where even a concurrent judge Kessler said that the aggravated factor to each of the attempted counts of murder of the five people was certainly supported by Oscar Ma- Nava's death. There were multiple victims, same to show in my case, but technically if it was a legislative intent to charge attempts to capital murder in the fashion they charged me in, the St. Alvin case, they could have easily pulled all five attempts to murders without Oscar Nava's death and just charged five attempts to capital murders. You understand what I'm saying? Right. I know it's a lot, a lot of them, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pull everything out at one time, but in my, in, 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 my, my point is this, just with that, let's just say that, 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 uh, that case alone. Why with each one of those persons that they had to charge the temp the, the capital murder and put a body with it? If they were to do it like my case, you know, they could have just you understand what I'm saying? Right. They took each of them names and they used the same dude's body. Oscar Nala. They put his body on each of those names of people that live. So in my case is the judge was right, you got to have a predicate murder. Gotta have an aggravated, gotta have some type of aggravated offense to invoke that 1903 statute. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So, in your opinion, what um what misconduct do you feel has taken place within the Texas judicial system concerning your place, and how how can it be addressed? I mean, the truth is the truth. The truth is the truth. And and everybody can get their own, they, they can they can correlate their own um perception. Um we just put the truth out. As 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 it relates to you, and only you know your truth. You know, and you know, it was, it was white victims, and then and I'm looking at it like when I first come down, you had me on two attempted murder. So why, why upgrade it when it, there's there's no there's no evidence? And then according to the, the penal code, in order to to find a statute, be charged with statute, you got to prove every point of the statute. You can't leave a, a piece out. So if you leave out a murder to something and don't have the rest, there's there's no way that you can have a complete statute. You know, and then you had. I, through my public records, that's another thing that, that could be addressed. We have to go through public records to get the truth from behind. Cause I, I haven't even dug into the part about the public records I got out, you know what I'm saying, where it's saying that it's a witness, a witness that said, hey, the, the suspect got away in a blue van. I owned a white uh, 1986 Delta 8A Oldsmobile. So, and I drove that right off the premises. So they saying somebody got away in the Oldsmobile. Then you have, uh, they, they really charged me up on this uh, 911 tape. Okay, they showed a 911 tape, uh, played a 911 tape in the courtroom, right? When they played the tape, they, they tried to put more shots than what was shot on that. You heard five shots, but they, they tried to put, did you hear the other one? It's blatant, you can't hear no other shot. The whole time in the tape, you hear two, two women that's irate with each other. You don't hear me in, in there at all. You, you don't hear me getting irate right with nobody. You hear me raising my voice. You don't hear nothing. You know, and I'm trying to figure out how how would that justify everything. And then you have the suspects. I mean, not the suspects. Excuse me. The, the victims. They never made any statement to the police. Only statement was made was to the other victim's civil attorney. This is all about money. You know, because from the jump, this this is the whole gist. When I had moved into the apartment complex, it was owned by these other people, and 
they sold it to the other apartment complex and in the other apartment complex people, uh, which was TV Older Guards the name when I came in, they said, well, we about to clean up this area because it was like to some drug dealing, you know, all kind of missions in the area. So that was their main thing, purpose. So we knew that thing was everything good, you know. So they hold perfect with that. So when this comes down to this, they wasn't worried about all uh, convicting him. They worried about getting money. Because when, in 1999, when I had entered the prison system, I had to go to another trial with a civil trial. And they sued me for a million dollars. So the main apartment complex that sold it sued the apartment complex that sold it. And the people that got shot, they sued the apartment complex. So the apartment complex sued me. You know what I'm saying? So it was all in the circle. So the whole the time, these, these victims, they didn't make no statement. So if you didn't make no statement, how did the grand jury indict me? You know? And then in 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 the in the uh, transcript they say you don't all you seen was five hundred guns you don't know who shot you know all you care all you care when the, when the police came in they kept uh, who shot they say my name they say my name but I'm like I don't remember anything you know and then my my voice is like on, on the uh, recording but at the same time like I say it's a big thing that's going on. And then, like I say at the beginning, the magistrate stage, the, uh, the indictment stage, the part when the, the attorney's supposed to be appointed, and all that. So, you know, it's, it's a lot that's going on down in the Tarrant County system that's it, it's very corrupt, you know what I'm saying? And everybody from when I got locked up, even before that, you can go back and check, and everybody got at least 50 plus. You know, for, for small, it's my first attempt. This first time I, I come check, I came down here. You know, to go to school, I graduated, I played football, I supposed to went to TCU, I, I, I had a, a, a scholarship where I was finna get picked up, you know, but, you know, I, I tell people to the streets, you know, people young, and, you know, I, I was kind of all here, but at the same time, you know, people make mistakes. So, I'm looking at, this is my first time offense, this is my first time ever committing a crime, and I was harshly convicted like this. Wow. So, um, what, in your opinion, are some things that can be reformed or changed to address some of the corruption and the unfairness um, right there in Texas? I think they have to start with the, 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 uh, the root of the problem, the people that's in right now. You know, over the time, you got to have some new, some new voices, just like you got the, the, young, the young kids out there in the generation. You got the older people that, that try to change and stuff. And they just need new bosses. So you need a, a, a whole new system that's coming in through, through elections, you know. And, and a lot of times, these people, it, it, it's all about the money. It's all about, you know, getting these votes. And, and, and it's for reasons that's not in support of us. So, so I mean, the way to, it, it, it's, so, it, it, it's so broad. The way the system is made down here in Texas, how it's ran, it's, it's, it's really overbearing. So, I mean, it's, it's not, man, I can go on for days, but like I say, I, I probably have to come on a later date and line those things up in order and just give it to you because, you know, like I say, I had, I had, a, you know, a real rough time trying to put together because it's so broad and so much stuff I'm trying to get out at one time. And, and it's a lot of stuff I know I miss, you know, because I, I know soon as I got out, I was like, man, I could have said that, I could have said that. But I could have had myself better prepared, but I felt that this is the opportunity that I need and the opportunity I have with the time. And dealing with this justice system, it's, you know, it got to be addressed. So um, for those that are tuning in and those that will hear this replay, um, what would you like to say to them? Um, are you in need of assistance? How can they support you? Um, what, 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 what's your message to them on today? Is, you know, um, I, was, I was young. I was young at the time. You know, you know, people make mistakes. You know, and, and everything. I'm, I'm not perfect, but at the same time, uh, I just want them to know that the stuff I have right now is it's like rebirth. When I say rebirth, it's like when, when you come down and you see things in a different light, you become you become a better person on down the line, line as you evolve. So. As me, I have evolved, and I just want somebody that, that reach out and hear me. They might not understand exactly what I was saying because, you know, I'm trying to get all out at once. But I just need somebody to sit down with me and actually go in-depth with my case and let me show them 
the ins and outs how it comes. I got everything drawn up like or it's like the uh, the uh, the format and everything. But it's just so it's so vast with it, it's so broad, I, I just can't put it all together and I just need somebody to sit down and look at it. You know, just give me a chance. And, uh, you know, I've been going on 26 years and over time I had to rehabilitate myself. But then I had to, like, when you get a life sentence, they don't give you, they don't give you, have the opportunity to give you the, uh, the opportunity to take any education. Like, I had to pay for school back in 2016. I was fortunate to have a family that had to pay for my school. And I come down here to the same uniform right now and took a college course. No, but I graduated high school. I took the college course and I come down and I try to better myself. But over the years, I really have been taking myself. I read different, you know, books, you know, part of history, philosophy, psychology, you know, educating myself on, on bad things, even business, uh, financial and talent and all that. So everybody not down here, you know, that they found you know, you, you know, it's people down here that's really from kind of change. And I can't speak to everybody, but I'm just looking for my second chance, you know, to get out, you know, better myself, be fit for society once again, you know, to show them who I am now. Well, I definitely um plan to have you back. Um, like I say I do this every Monday, um, every Monday from eleven to around um two o'clock. I'm 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 usually on here. Um, provide an opportunity for anybody within the TDCJ that want to come on and share their story. Um, and of course, I, I plan to have you on um, in November. I think um, I mentioned November the 6th. It's going to be an evening show that I'm going to be doing through the crew podcast. Um, so I definitely um, plan on getting you back on and sharing your story um, even the more. Um, so it Everybody can plan to tune in on November the 6th at 8 p.m. Um, my time, which will be 7 p.m. Um, Texas time, um, to hear more about your story and um, anything that you would like to share. I know that you are an author um, as well. Um, so we okay. definitely want to get um, people um, involved um, and, and supporting um, the things that you are doing and to see that you are um, making a difference, even from behind um, those walls, that you are still being a voice and still um, trying to make a difference. So if you're out there and you're hearing this, I, I, I want you to, whatever you can in your heart of hearts, um, feel the need to do. If it's just writing a letter um, to the Congress people um, in the state of Texas, the legislator, whatever it may be, um, we want your help. We apply. We 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 are asking for your help. Um, if you want to um, reach out, um, you can reach out to me. Um, of course, I I can um, get you in contact with him. Um, but we definitely uh, want to get you guys involved in what's going on behind these prison walls here in the state of Texas. Um, the unjust unjustness that has taken in place. Um, I, I just put a plea out to those people that are in power. We just want you to be accountable for those things that you've done. All those wrongs that you've done, we just want you to make them right because you can make them right. You can rectify that. You know, people make mistakes. There are a lot of people that are on the outside that probably need to be in prison, but because of grace and mercy, they, they, they didn't get caught. And that is so, that, that, is, that is the case. But the fact that these people would deliberately overlook stuff and deliberately falsify documents and do different things to keep to imprison people and then to keep them in there and lock them out of the system. Because I just from what I'm seeing, it's just like once they get you in there, it's just like they lock you out of the system. They make it hard for you to appeal. They make it hard for you to 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 do anything against what they've already done and they think that they they wrongness is right and 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 that's not the case so um i definitely thank you for coming on and um sharing i i, I know sometimes it's not easy to tell your story so um i applaud you for that um if somebody wants to support your books um how can they get um your material 
So like I said, I had, uh, I had published a book before, but the editor was messed up on it, so I had to re retake out the line and redo it or whatever, but it never got done. So that's, I'm in the process of doing that right now. I just, you know, in the PDF. Right, right, onto right. Onto Amazon, Kindle, or whatever, you know. But if anybody out there, you know, can help me with that, you know, that'd, that'd be good too. Right, right. So we definitely gonna be on the watch for for those things. And again, and um, if you're out there, um, if you are a paralegal and you have any um experts expertise in um criminal justice, or if you're an advocate, or if you have an organization or whatever, and um, you can help tackle these cases, um. Please reach out to me, and we can see how we can work together to help bring um, some of these people home um, that need to be home. Some of these people have been gone twenty plus years, y'all, and that's a long time to be away from your family. And then you don't know when you're coming home because they keep offsetting you, and they keep doing this and keep left. doing that. So we definitely want to get some of these people home. Again, I thank you, and I'll be talking to you soon because we're definitely going to get you back on. Um, mark your calendar, November the sixth, eight p.m. Um, 8 p.m. I got yeah. you down. So mark your calendar. And again, thank you for being a willing voice. Uh, thank you. Too. Thank you. So I definitely oh, I want you know. guys to make sure that you're sharing this out. Um, we have one more um, individual that's going to be coming on. Um, it's a young lady. Um, she is um, being incarcerated. She's a juvenile. She been she was incarcerated as a juvenile. Um, she's going to be coming on, sharing her story, and um, she's in one of the worst women prisons in the state of Texas. So you ain't no telling what you might hear. So I definitely want you guys to share this out, and if you can, come back, stop back by, and um, get involved, y'all. Talk to you soon.